If you're working on a racing game, then you will probably need a checkpoint system for this game, which is exactly what I'm going to show you today. We're going to be building a versatile checkpoint system specifically for racing games that includes the following features. The option to have parallel checkpoints, meaning you could split your track into two and the player could take either one of these checkpoints. We will have the function to revert to the last checkpoint you have crossed and we will also implement a lap system that lets you configure how many laps the player has to take or in other words how many times the player has to cross each checkpoint as well as the finish line. Alright so let's not waste any more time and start creating our checkpoint system. So the first thing we'll have to do is to navigate to your vehicle pawn. In my case it's just the vehicle advanced pawn that comes with the car template from Unreal Engine. And for the checkpoint system to work, you have to set up three variables inside your vehicle uh, pawn class. The first variable will be the amount of checkpoints we have already crossed, and this should be an integer. And by default, it should be at zero. The second variable will be the amount of laps that the player has to cross. And this should also be an integer, and by default, this should be at one. Now, our last variable is going to be an actor reference to the last checkpoint that we have crossed. So again, this should be an actor reference as in terms of type. So once we have all that set up, we can start creating the blueprint class for our checkpoints. So go to your content browser and create a new blueprint class and make it an actor. Once you're inside the Blueprint class, you have to add a box that triggers all the checkpoint logic. If you already have a mesh for your checkpoint, then you can just use a box collision. But for this tutorial, I'm going to use a normal box with a semi-transparent material. However, both, both boxes will behave basically the same way. And of course, you should scale that box to reasonable dimensions. Also, you have to make sure that your red arrow is facing in the forward direction because when you revert back to checkpoint, your car will be facing the same direction as the red arrow. And I'm also going to add a very simple text render um, that says checkpoint. So let's hit compile and save and head over to the event graph. Before we can start with the code, however, we need two more variables over here. The first one is going to be a boolean that tells us whether or not this checkpoint is the finish line. And our second variable is going to be our index, which is supposed to be an integer. This index variable is what allows us to check whether or not the player is taking the checkpoints in the correct order. It also allows us to have parallel checkpoints, so for example there could be two checkpoints with the index 3 and you can take both of these checkpoints before you go to 4. Also make sure that both of these variables are instance editable. Next you have to select your cube or your box collision, scroll down and under collision presets select overlap all dynamic. This will allow the player to drive through the checkpoint while simultaneously triggering an overlap event. So if you scroll down to the events, navigate to on component begin overlap and click the plus icon. Drag a pin of the overlap event and look for cast to vehicle advanced pawn. Connect the object pin to the other actor pin. Next, look for compare int. Drag off the input pin and connect it to your index variable. Now we need to access our checkpoints cross variable as our vehicle advanced pawn. Add 1 to the value and compare this to the index. If the index is greater 
then checkpoints cross plus one. This means that the player is still missing some checkpoints and we will print a string, so we know. If the index is smaller than checkpoints cross plus one, this means that the player has already been here. Only if the index is exactly the checkpoints crossed plus one, the checkpoint has been successfully crossed. So if that's the case, we're gonna set our checkpoints crossed variable to the value of our index variable. And of course the target has to be connected to your vehicle pawn. After we set the checkpoints crossed variable, we will then set the last checkpoint variable. Again, connect this to the vehicle advance pawn and for the last checkpoint we're gonna get a reference to self. I'm also gonna add some basic sound effects right here. And after our successful checkpoint crossing, we're gonna add a branch and we're gonna branch on our is finish. So if it is the finish line, we can now trigger anything after the true pin. And this is where we're gonna trigger our finish event in the vehicle advance pawn. But we still have to create this and we're gonna do this right now. Now, inside your vehicle advance pawn, create a new custom event and call it finish. Whenever this event is called, we want to decrement our lapse variable. Because we've just finished one lapse, so we have one less to go. We are then gonna compare our decremented lapse variable with zero. If it's greater than zero, then we still have some laps to go and we're gonna reset our checkpoints cross variable. If it's equal to zero, that means we have no more laps left to go, or in other words, we're finished. And I'm also gonna add a print node that prints out the laps we still have left to go. So let's hit compile and save and add this to the event graph of our checkpoint blueprint. Lastly, we're gonna set up the mechanic that lets you revert to the last checkpoint you've crossed. So start by looking for keyboard events and in my case I'm gonna choose C for checkpoint. From there on you want to look for set actor transform. Drag off the transform pin and look for make transform. Now, we're gonna get both our location and our rotation from our last checkpoint, which we still have a reference to. So, look for get actor location, connect this to the last checkpoint variable, and look for get actor rotation and do the same. And don't forget to check teleport. Now we only have to reset the momentum to zero. Uh, and to do this, we can just uh, scroll down in the event graph because um, the code for this already exists. And we can just copy these two nodes and paste them at the end. All right, so now we're basically finished. So I'm just gonna drop a few checkpoints into the level and uh, we can try them out. As you can see, the scale is not perfect, but it's not a big problem because uh, we can just scale our checkpoint to fit the track. Also, when you're placing these checkpoints, make sure that the index is correct. So the first checkpoint should be index one, the second should be index two, the third should be index three, and so on and so on. Also, don't forget at the final checkpoint to check the is finish so we can trigger all the finish code. Alright, so that was it for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. And if you did, feel free to let me know by liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you don't want to miss out on any future uploads. And I hope I see you in the next video. And until then, bye bye.